We all have a personal style. And no matter what your style is, it matters. And we'll find out about leadership styles and why they matter right after this. Hey, and welcome back to the channel. My name's KG. If you've never been here before, this is a channel all about growing leaders. And today we've got a great topic. It is leadership styles. We're gonna cover the nine most popular leadership styles. And I know that some of you are thinking, but why does it matter, KG? I don't care about a leadership style. But trust me, you should. Think about it, you wouldn't wear the same clothes to every situation and the same applies to leadership styles. You bring different leadership styles to different situations because that's what it requires. As we go through the different leadership styles, you'll find a little bit of yourself in many of the styles. And just like you would for your clothing, you can still tailor the style to be what you wanna make of it. No one's gonna be the same, and I wanna make sure that you understand the styles that you can take to the right situation at the right time. And if you hold on to the end, I can give you a great tip on how to know your personal leadership style. The first three styles that I'll cover have all been introduced by Kurt Lewin, kind of the godfather of leadership styles. So let's start with autocratic leadership. The autocratic leader likes to be in control and expects the team to deliver on instructions given. This leader works best when quick decisions are required or absolute quality is expected. Think about surgeons or in a high-end restaurant or in the military. There are some pros to this leader. They're great in emergencies and their instructions are clear and precise. And there are some cons. The potential for abuse of power and team creativity can be discouraged. The next one is democratic leader. And I'm not talking about like red state, blue state, that kind of democratic. No, no, I'm talking about the type of leadership style that you bring to the table. And democratic leadership is all about having other people participate in the conversation. They also call it the participative leader, the participative leadership style. Anyway, democratic leadership style. The democratic leader involves the team in key decisions and encourages debate and open discussions and creates an atmosphere of unity. This leader is best when you need to cultivate talent within a team or where new ideas or direction is needed. The good thing about this leader is the team has a sense of empowerment. And this leader can also help increase creativity and innovation and promotes inclusion and diversity. There are also some cons. This type of leader can become too dependent on the team and the speed of decisions can suffer and outcomes can depend on the experience of the whole team. And next we have the last style introduced by Lewin, laissez-faire leadership. Laissez-faire is a French term and it means to let it be. I like to call it the laid back leader and this is what it's all about. The laissez-faire leader doesn't interfere much and has an assumption of mutual trust within a team but still helps the team when issues arise. This leader is best working with a team of experts. The pros for this leader includes fully engaged experts and high performers within the team. Individuals are encouraged to take personal responsibility and there's a high degree of autonomy within the team. Some cons include lack of coaching and at times the less than clear accountability can lead to ineffective outcomes. And then we have charismatic leader. A charismatic leader is just like it sounds. It is the type of leader who can galvanize the group of people all together. Now, don't always think of it as maybe someone who is attractive or has a, a big personality. Sometimes a charismatic leader can just be the type that is charismatic enough in the way they operate. I have a friend who's quite charismatic in the way they operate. They're not the type that you would typically think of, like someone who's you know, uh, suave and debonair or someone who is a great speaker, who's beautiful and attractive in that way. It's not that at all. He is a person who is just quirky enough and just sarcastic enough and makes everyone laugh. And because he has the attention of people, he is a great leader because of it. And it's not because he's always the one in front and making big, bold statements or being the one making big speeches. It's just because he's been able to connect with everyone around him in a charismatic way. So that can also be a charismatic leader. The charismatic leader can readily transform the beliefs and attitudes of others. They have the power to influence and inspire people and can help others see the vision of the future. This leader is best when social change is needed and where processes aren't rigid. The advantages of this leader include the ability to inspire people to work together for a common cause. They can also help create cohesive teams. 
The downside to this leader is they can often develop tunnel vision or arrogance, or the organization could become too dependent on the leader and suffers if they leave. This leader can also believe they're above the law. Transactional leader is the next one we'll talk about, and it is exactly as it sounds. It's one of those leadership types that focuses on performance. The transactional leader believes that employment and specific tasks are like transactions. The team accepts a job and agrees to complete the task, and workers are rewarded or punished based on their performance. This type of leader is often seen in consulting services or architecture or technology outsourcing or construction. The leader is also seen with project managers and project delivery teams. This leader is also great at helping achieve short-term goals quickly. The advantages of this type of leader, the rewards and penalties are really clearly defined. This leader also encourages high performance. The downsides for this leadership style is creativity can often be limited and personal growth with this leader may suffer. All right, before we go any further, there's a few more leadership styles to go, but please look down below in the description after this video. There is a two minute quiz that you can take to know your own leadership styles. I highly recommend it, it's great fun, and you'll know in two minutes what your predominant leadership style is, so check it out. Now we'll talk about some of the more contemporary styles, and I say contemporary meaning that they're quite popular these days. I would say the democratic leader is also quite popular these days, but these next few are well represented in today's modern leadership world. Like the charismatic leader, the transformational leader inspires others. They specialize in initiating and delivering change. They motivate employees to perform at the peak of their ability. The transformational leader works best in an organization where change is needed or in an organization that's outdated and requires serious retooling. They can also work well in a small company that has big ambitions and is willing to adapt and flex to change. This type of leader is great at communicating new ideas they're good at balancing short-term vision and long-term goals, and they're experienced at building strong coalitions and trust across teams. This type of leader can be ineffective in ad hoc situations, and they're not particularly effective with bureaucratic structures. The servant leader has a natural desire to serve first. The leader is compassionate and has a desire to nurture others. People or organizations that are socially responsible are often called servant leaders. This leader is best where they look to improve their people, their organization, or their community. This type of leader often leads to social consciousness within an organization. They can also create employee-first advocacy. They can help create a positive corporate culture. The downsides for this leader can include the length of time it takes to achieve results, and they can also be perceived to have a low focus on results. The supportive leader provides the team with the coaching and skills needed. This type of leader is ready to step in and help with issues. This leader works best where things are physically or psychologically challenging. The supportive leader can often create loyalty within teams. They can also help the team feel valued and provide support in a stressful situation. There are also cons to the supportive leader. Teams may become dependent on the leader to help complete tasks, and because they often step in, the responsibility lines can become blurred. And last but not least is situational. So situational leadership is exactly as described. It is leadership that adapts to the situation. The situational leader chooses a style that fits the goal and circumstances. They also take stock of their current team and the many variables to work out the right approach. This leader works well in a team environment that has frequent change. The positives, this person can mold to the needs of the team. The downside, these changes in style and approach can often be confusing. That's it, we're done. And, and trust me, there are other leadership styles out there, but these are the ones that you need to know. And I'm so glad you hung with me. If you like this content in any way, please like and subscribe, uh, forward it to all your friends. And otherwise, we'll see you next week. Bye.